So in this topic, we'll be looking about overview and the type of this and uh, what we do on conceptual design, what we do on design, uh, detail design, and also uh, the process that are involved in a design of bridges and also what are the future trends and how your career path uh, would be looking like if you're choosing bridge engineering as your career path. So uh, if you come to a brief overview, bridges has been uh, there for a really long time. Bridges are generally built to connect two points it, over an obstacle. It could be a valley, it could be a highway, or it could be a railway line. And uh, even to uh, carry water from uh, one point of origin to other uh, locations. Uh, it, that has been done over a long period of time uh, by use of aqueducts. And... Uh, other than that, it's also a part of structural engineering. There are quite a lot of civil engineering disciplines that are involved in design of bridges. So that includes traffic engineering. In certain cases, hydraulic designers are also uh, helping us. And in few cases, uh, irrigation, uh, irrigation networks, they also help us. And it's, it, it is not only a part of civil engineering, quite a lot of other departments also help us generally in a fresh design because we also carry quite a few pipes and also utility lines, electrical and those kind of work also happens in a bridges. So it's a very interdisciplinary work, uh, generally what design engineers do is. And uh, so we also help in development of economy and community. So you can see quite a lot of uh, NGOs are all, also involved in bridge engineering parts so, uh, in Africa especially and also in South America. So there is uh, Engineers Without Borders and also Bridges to Prosperity. These are NGOs that are helping connecting rural communities across rivers, which uh, become inaccessible in times of uh, half a year or one fourth of a year. And the people have to move a really long way around to uh, get connected to the rest of their communities. And basically coming back to the bridges, the oldest form of bridges are basically uh, flexural or beam type bridges. So basically uh, timber locks or stones are used for, uh, used as, uh, just laid over the ob uh, obstacle, like a small uh, stream of water or things like that since prehistoric time, just to cross them. So that will be, uh, that can be considered the start of the bridges. Uh, and after that, a detailed design, design thing came in as arches came in. So Romans started developing arches since very early times. So there are Roman aqueducts that are still dated up to 3th century BC. That is an aqueduct. Aqueduct carries water from one point to their cities. So that has been uh, done since 3rd century BC. And other than that, we can see root bridges or we can say that cables, uh, cable bridges that has been happening since uh, very old times in Asia and also in rural South America. And similarly, bridges are also very effective in transporting the aqueduct, I think, arches. And with the advent of technology, we can also see that uh, new bridges also coming into effect, like cast iron. Uh, that came in around industrialization. It's around 300 uh, years earlier. And also we can see steel bridges over the period of time in the last century. And also quite a lot of RC bridges, reinforced concrete uh, bridges, pre-stress bridges. And also in current current scenario, we can see also see a lot of uh, FRP bridges, fiber reinforced polymers. So here you can see about the type of bridges over here, which I have mentioned. So these are old Roman aqueducts that has been here since at least 2000 years. And similarly, we can see the root bridges that are in uh, part of uh, India. So you can see it in northeastern part of the India. So the one on the right is the Millennium Bridge. It's a suspension cable bridge, but it's somewhat very futuristic. And it, it is in the heart of London, you can see that. So next, coming to the type of bridges. Bridges can be classified based on uh, materials and also their behavior and also based on their purpose. So coming to materials, it's pretty basic. So you can say it is uh, what kind of materials they are built on. It could be a steel bridge or a concrete bridge or a fiber FRP bridge. So basically this is the basic type, but steel also you can see that there are quite a lot of other types of steel bridges. And similarly with concrete, based on the mechanism, you can see that it is pre-stress bridges or reinforced bridges. And coming to behavior. So how a bridge behaves, you can see that based on compression, basic com uh, principle of compression, you can see that arch, br arch bridges behave in that way. It uh, completely transfers forces through compression. On flexure, you can see slab bridges, beam slash uh, beam or girder bridges and also cantilever bridges so they behave on the principle of bending and shear basically you can say and the third type would be tension bridges so that would be uh, the main uh, mechanism in which they uh, transfer their forces would be through uh, tension in their cable tension that incur in their cables that could be through uh, that could be through cable stay bridges or suspension cable bridges. And the last type would be truss bridges. I hope most of you would be civil engineers, so you can you would know what a truss is. It generally is members that are completely released against uh, bending. So it doesn't take any bending. It takes generally actual forces with that uh, either tension or compression. That's how a truss generally works.
and then coming upon the purpose we can see uh, it could be a foot bridge a railway bridge a road bridge or aqueduct there are also quite a lot of other types of bridges where uh, it could be used for utility bridges as well so basically this is the type of bridges which we could see so here are the few types of bridges as we have uh, discussed earlier the one on the left is an arch bridge and one of the center top is a steel girder bridge one of the center is a simple uh, culvert which you can say it's a slab bridge and one on the right is a truss bridge and one of the uh, bottom right is the golden gate bridge which is a sorry suspension cable bridge and one on the left is signature bridge in delhi which is a cable stay bridge for fixing the bridges uh, it's quite a uh, quite interdisciplinary work so you can say that uh, the conceptual design of the bridge is a iterative process it comes up uh, with interactive with various interacting with various departments so basically it uh, comes uh, a bridge is decided upon based on uh, four things you can see as i have mentioned over here on the right so one is the purpose other one is the cost then the aesthetics and the surrounding conditions so purpose of the bridge you can see that uh, you can say that it is required for connecting two points across the river if you want to make an interchange over a highway or if you want to cross a railway bridge existing railway uh, railway track so these are the purposes on which the bridge is built generally the purpose is also not completely dependent on bridge engineers uh, that is the structural engineers i mean so in this case uh, there could be highway engineers who de uh, decide upon the uh, level at which the road has to run and similarly if it is a railway bridge it is dependent on the railway authority as well and similarly if it's a dependent engineer engineering teams to decide upon the uh, span of the bridge uh, where they are located and similarly with the uh, hydraulic engineer if it's a navigable canal then in that case uh, it is also dependent on the waterways how what is the clearance that should be allowed and what is the intermittent spans and where the piers should be placed etc so these things are decided upon be, uh, based on the purpose of the bridge and the next case would be the cost even though there could be multiple spans multiple piers that could be placed on the way of the bridge in certain cases the crossing which the built, uh, bridge is built upon it could be pretty deep so in certain cases they also cross across the oceans uh, or a small uh, small length of ocean in certain cases it could be somewhat uh, pretty fast flowing rivers where uh, putting multiple substructures would not be ideal so in that case uh, it comes to uh, a structural engineer to uh, identify where to place this span so whether it is ideal to place it on the edges only or it is ideal to place multiple spans across the river so that uh, that's how we come across the cost the next thing is about the aesthetics so certain bridges are placed in very important locations like as i as i was mentioning in my previous image it's about the uh, golden gate bridge in san francisco or a millennium bridge or a tower bridge in london those kind of bridges are uh, especially icons or landmarks so they need to be beautiful so they uh, the purpose of them is to serve as a landmark so that is also dependent upon the architects who designed the bridge they are they are also involved and uh, they decide upon how the bridge should be looking and how it should represent the city and the last one would be the surrounding conditions as i have mentioned uh, in purpose somewhat it's very inter interdependent it could be based on the soil conditions and uh, it uh, it is also based on the type of the superstructure what we are carrying for instance in certain cases certain type of bridges are preferred uh what i'm uh, what i'm trying to uh, specifically say over here surrounding conditions is the for instance if it's a railway bridge uh then you need a particular type of clearance that the rail doesn't intersect with your uh, substructure and similarly if it's a waterway then the uh, ship or a uh, boat that is passing through under your bridge that should not intersect with your bridge uh, it should be free to uh, move across and similar with the soil conditions if the soil is somewhat pretty deep the hardened soil is very deep and uh, very clay or loose uh, loose condition occurs over the uh near the uh, surface then we have to put a very, very deep foundations in that case we tend to minimize the number of piers so coming to the case of detailed design so detailed design uh, people would think there are quite a lot of other methods uh, which we designed upon the forces it could be based on various uh, mechanisms as we have discussed earlier it could be through compression it could be through a truss or it could be through other phenomena such as a flexure so in that case people think it's pretty complex and every forces are coming through different we have to learn individual methods and that is very important of course it is important but coming to the basics they come upon from basically th from the newton's uh, laws of action so you can say that so basically we try to find out what are the forces acting in the bridge through the through this one you can say every every force has equal and opposite reactions so basically we tend to find out the reactions and that's how we tend to equate the forces so that is the first basic which we use for structural analysis let it be indeterminate structure or a determinate structure this is the first thing that we 
try to apply over any stable to find the equilibrium so let it be trust let it be in the detailed design case that's uh, we tend to find the equilibrium and this equilibrium is applied through various methods either through finite element methods or through a stiffness matrix methods or even simple analysis as a, for a sorry determinate structure as a determinate structure the second case would be how we find the act, uh, forces so the forces basically everyone knows forces is equal to mass into acceleration so every uh, let it be breaking let it be centrifugal forces we tend to equate the gravitational uh, for dead loads we tend to uh, put gravitational uh, acceleration with the mass of each and every, based on various densities of materials that's how we tend to find the forces so that's how we come uh, come across statistics uh, statics where we find the forces that is acting on the structure and the third part would be where the structure uh, stays in motion unless upon uh, it is not distributed by ex- disturbed by external forces that's where the dynamics comes in so whether it is due to the unstable forces of the wind where the bridge is in motion and we have to find how in cases this specifically uh, happens in long span bridges where the bridge tends to aeroelastic or aerodynamically in, uh, in unstable so there are various phenomena such as flutter then uh, or divergence and those kind of things are happen in long span bridges so those things are find out using dynamics and similarly for earthquake forces as well so how we find the time period of the structure and those kind of things basically occur with this so that's how we determine the forces uh, that are happening due to dynamics due to the deflections and similar methods coming to de- uh, design we generally tend to analyze the bridges using as i have mentioned in the fourth point uh, fifth point you can see we use various methods such as finite element analysis methods or stiffness matrix methods or uh, flexibility methods and similarly other simple methods are used for sim- uh, determining determinate st- uh, structures and further coming down the, the design of the structure is basically done in uh, limit state design for con- uh, rcc structures and when it's uh, a steel girder then we generally tend to go for either elastic plastic or buckling gown design coming to the design process so first thing will be the geometry selection so i have i think i have already covered this point pretty much so first thing is based on the selection of the geometry and the material used the first uh, is the first step in the design and so basically uh, we tend to find out what kind of geometry we are going for either it is an arch or it's a cable stay bridge and uh, what kind of materials we are using for it and they are pretty much interdependent in quite a few cases for instance uh, we generally go for, uh, if it's a tension based design like a cable stay bridge or if it's a uh, suspension cable bridge we generally go for steel in the uh, in this ca- uh, kind of design so they are pretty much interdependent uh, the span as i have mentioned earlier the span is uh, not only the work of a structural engineer but it's also dependent on the other field of engineering as i have mentioned earlier it could be due to the clearance of railways so if it's uh, if you have two tracks uh, running under the bridge then we have a fixed clearance that we call it a 10 feet uh, for one track and mostly 20 feet or more than that it depends on country to country and similarly if it's a highway so it depends on the transport engineer so whether we can place a pier in between the highway or they want a continuous span that also depends on them so that's what i have mentioned in the next point as well transportation slash traffic engineers design on the alignment of the bridge as well so it's not only what is happening under the bridge even on the bridge uh, there could be certain curves vertical curves horizontal curves how the bridge uh, the traffic moves on the bridge that is also dependent on the transportation engineers in this case and similarly hydro, hydraulic engineers des, uh, decide the clearance of the bridge and they also uh, pretty much help us with uh, measuring the score depth what is the velocity uh, force that is acting on the piers for instance so it is pretty much dependent on the what is the volume of the uh, water that is going under the bridge that uh, impact uh, that causes the maximum force in the piers and determining the maximum flood levels or the minimum flood levels those things are also done by them and the last one is the architects they also play a very significant role in how they are made and how it is planned and where it is located how it is made as a landmark and for what uh, based on the purpose as well so the bridges you can uh, the first uh, basic things when we go for detailed design will be the evaluation of the permanent loads it is somewhat very independent uh, sorry very dependent on the not only permanent loads it, very, it is very dependent on the vehicle loads as well because the amount of permanent load required is directly proportional to the amount of vehicle load that will be uh, acting on the bridge so in quite long span bridges it, it can be pretty much noted that most of the bridges uh, materials used are to satisfy for their own weights actually it's uh, used they are just uh, the materials used are pretty much used to carry their own weight that is the basic thing and uh, 
superimposed dead loads they can vary for instance we have a wearing coat in certain case we have uh, handrails if, if it's a pedestrian bridge or we have vehicle restraint systems in case of uh, highway bridge and in case of uh, railway loads we have to also look into other cases such as ballast or in certain cases it could be derailment so those can uh, those kind of forces also hap happen in uh, permanent loads but sidl that causes the ballast load that will be coming into your perm uh, permanent load other things would be uh, the very important part would be the earth pressure quite a few bridges which you will be seeing uh, you might not even notice that these bridges are that are uh, culverts or uh, integral bridges these are very short span bridges uh, it could be up to 5 meters or 2 meters etc but uh, these bridges are made as integral bridges so what happens with them is that the earth pressure forms a pretty significant load on them if it's a long span bridge earth pressure acts only on the substructure it doesn't uh, much affect the superstructure but in these kind of shorter span structure they also for, uh, form a significant part of the superstructure design in certain cases they act beneficial to our design because uh, they induce compression on the slab or the girder in integral bridges so this earth pressure provides additional compression so this compression helps in benefit of design so compression uh, generally tends to increase the bending capacity of the structure up to a particular limit so in that case they are pretty useful so we also estimate them in permanent load evaluation so the last point uh, as i have mentioned i think i have covered them already so that is the handrails then vehicle restraint system in certain cases there are also roofs in very aesthetic bridges you can see uh, they may uh, they may be in uh, certain uh, important locations where you have like sh uh, even shops and uh, bars are located on uh, certain kind of bridges where they have roofs they not only act as bridge but also as a structure in this case then we are coming to vehicle loads so vehicle loads are pretty important this is what makes bridge engineering pretty complex. so coming to vehicle loads vehicle loads uh, is what makes bridge engineering somewhat pretty interesting uh, because in other kind of structures we tend to take static loads uh, they are located in uh, the same place over the period of time even though they uh, they have changes it doesn't make much of a difference but vehicle loads form a significant part of the bridge which are located in different locations in different parts of time so the analysis of uh, vehicle loads is done using uh, vehicle load analysis oh, sorry moving load analysis or also using uh, or influence surface diagrams so if if a engineer is pretty competent about which part of the structures he has to give the re reinforcements then he uses the influence surface diagrams analysis because uh, they know that one fourth of the bridge needs to be designed half of the bridge needs to be designed or in across the slab these are the locations which are the critical so if i take influence lines for these locations and give those reinforcements or give those strength of uh, steel in other parts of the bridge then uh, it is pretty good so that's how uh, vehicle loads are taken for design other thing is the moving load analysis and people are somewhat not sure which part of the bridge incurs the uh, significant uh, major forces then we also tend to go for moving load analysis so simple vehicle load analysis where the every uh, the vehicle is placed at each and every point of the bridge and the forces is also taken for the maximum envelopes uh, we call it the envelopes when the vehicle is uh, located at the start of the bridge we would have a force at the particular point in the bridge when the vehicle is placed at the end of the bridge we will have a particular force at the bridge and we make an envelope of maximum forces for each location so we design the bridges for these envelopes so the same envelopes are also applied in influence lines but but we know those locations so influence line can be uh, very helpful in case you are uh, pretty familiar with which part of the bridges you are going to be using for design or if you are not familiar with it the moving load uh, analysis is pretty helpful these loads are generally taken from for india specifically if, you, if i mention that it's taken from irc6 and the type of uh, vehicle loads we are using is irc class aa or 70r in case of highway uh, highway bridge design and also in certain important municipalities where there is a high uh, movement of uh, vehicles and tanks that could be in border areas uh, if it's a significant city or things like that then we use this kind of uh, loading that is class aa and class 70r so Uh, class double eight uh, and seventy are track vehicles are of same uh, loads, but some uh, class seventy are somewhat long and class double uh, eight somewhat short in track vehicles. So they both are of only seven hundred kilo newton. Uh, in case of uh, wheel vehicles, you can see that class seventy are somewhat heavy. It's thousand kilo newton, but it's somewhat a pretty long load. So in case of a shorter design, uh, in case of design of a shorter bridge, then class seventy uh, sorry class double eight governs over here because even though it's only four hundred kilo newton. kilo newton it is somewhat placed in a very concentrated area then even though we are designing the bridges for highway bridges for class 70 and class double any bridges required to be designed for class a uh, loading so class a loading is uh, applied for all permanent bridges actually so class double and 70 might be avoided in case of local municipalities or things uh, somewhat 
not accessible by highway if it's not a state, uh, state highway or a major district road then we don't need uh, to use class 70 or class double in those kind of bridges it could be running to very few houses of a particular part of the community but this kind of heavy vehicles are not governing in those highways or the roads so in that way uh, we'll be using class c uh, for the design of those kind of bridges and class b uh, bridges these are generally used only for timber uh, you can say that timber uh, bridges which are mostly not in use but they are pretty helpful in case of temporary bridges where uh, an existing bridge is uh, broken or in that case a subsidiary bridge is provided so in that uh, location class b bridges uh, uh, irc class b comes into design class a and class uh, class b have pretty much the same pattern but a variation in the magnitude of each and every forces as you can see it in the next slide 